We've been fighting a long time, and we have all lost so very much, so many loved ones gone. But you are not alone. There are pockets of resistance all around the planet. We are at the brink. You have no idea how important you are. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Ave Maricela, Dei Mater Alma, Ad Semper Virgo, Felix Teliporta. Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sense of Fidelity. I'm coming at you on the 7th of September 2020, Labor Day, which in 2020... How many people are actually laboring because of the Corona COVID pandemic, scamdemic, whichever we want to use for this? Please don't use pandemic. It's not a pandemic. And please, if you're a cleric, priest, that are giving a sermon, which if you know it's not a pandemic, which hopefully you do know. With the WHO, I think it's supposed to be 7% mortality rate. They Funny, they took that off their website. And last I calculated last week, we were at a, a 0.034% mortality rate. South Carolina came out with one today on the updated stats, and I did the calculations. It was 0 0.02. So uh, it's like most of these articles, a lot of articles coming out saying you have a better chance of dying taking a bath than you will getting COVID. Definitely driving. If you're scared to go outside and you have to put a mask on, don't turn your car engine on. you got a better chance of dying in your car than you do that. But let's look at leadership and humility from all this. I remember saying, from, if you guys remember that from months ago, it seems like, what are we in, day 180 of the 15 days of planet curve? I was talking about this was given a plague of leadership, bad leadership, a plague. Another friend of mine brought up a plague of lack of authority. We didn't know who to trust. Your docs here, your the priest here. You, you don't know who to trust. My, you know, you say you think what this one priest is a you know genius, and all of a sudden he's living in fear and thinking everything's you know run for the hills type deal. And though there's, you're looking at it going, what are you talking about? Can you show evidence for this? Anyways, so leadership and humility. I mean. What is a sign of a good leader? Admitting you made a mistake, correcting it, and not letting it happen again. I remember uh, a certain priest uh, people probably know of by now. I'm not. I won't say any names, but we talk about. We talked about. We were at a men's group, and he mentioned that how the like with the new mass. What is going? What? Are the what are most bishops doing? They're doubling down, doubling down, doubling down. They won't admit the numbers are going down. They won't admit the obvious, how there's a crisis in the faith, a crisis in the church, because you destroyed the liturgy, and you saw right off the bat the fruits of it, numbers plummet across the board and everything. But what they can't admit that it's a failure. One priest said, because if you admit it, it would be like, in like their whole priesthood is another failure. Well, it will be if you don't admit it. But if you can admit it and then change the court, here's what we're going to do to fix it. I am sorry. We screwed up. I screwed up. Won't let it happen again. Let's do this and let's fix the problem. That's a sign of a good leader. That's what leaders are supposed to be. Leaders aren't do this because I said so. That's not leadership. Again, if you want, you know, more on this, get the books, get the you know, extreme ownership book that Jacko has, or Dichotomy of Leadership. Uh, that's what that was a really that was a really good one as well. I know Father got me turned on on that. It's the you know the Marine that you know the, took the uh, he talked about leader. He what he have uh, they had blue on blue crime out there. Uh, ended up having, uh, friendlies were shot at shooting at each other in the middle of a battle. And he could have blamed other people because a lot of people screwed up, as they, as he says in the thing. A lot of people messed up that day. They ended up killing a friendly, blue and blue uh, tragedy, they call it. So what did he do? He, at the end of the meeting, he took full responsibility. The buck stops with me. And he took went into his, uh, to his superiors, told them that he messed up, how he was going to never let that happen again, what he was going to do to fix it. 
and moved on and they promoted him and he gives many stories about that in that book about people that did things they would they would because they were escalon front is their group right now they go into businesses and help them you know change the way they're doing if they're going down they try to get everything going back so they're consultants type they're, they're bobs if you ever seen office space space they're bobs with muscles <laughs> so uh they, they there's some there's some accounts in there it's been a couple months since i read it. there's some accounts in there about going into a business and the manager or the CEO or whoever they're talking to, the HR guy, is just putting all kinds of excuses down. This doesn't work, this doesn't, this doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And they, they end up getting it to, I remember one guy, they tell him, say, just go go in there and tell them it's all your fault. He goes, no, they'll fire me. He goes, no, no, they won't fire you. They'll end up promoting, they'll respect you more. And he fought him for like two days. He finally went in, told him that it was his fault, and gave him, came a plan of what they were going to do to fix things. And the bosses were impressed. Gave a promotion, hired the people they needed to do, fired the people they needed to get rid of, and now they're a very successful company. Now, the church thought about doing that. Well, you know, that's like kind of like the new Coke, uh, old Coke thing. Every, that's a the argument that's ad nauseum that's been talked about. But let, look at the COVID thing. Okay, across the board, they all bought into this. Well, a lot of people bought into it up front. I even kind of bought into it up front. Just because you didn't know, no one knew exactly what was going on. You had to sit back and watch the numbers. The guy from Ireland, Dave Cullen, on uh, Competing Forever, he bought it. He admits it. He kept the videos up about him talking about shutting everything down. He, and now he's complete opposite. I know priests that were about all for shutting it down, you know, locking the doors. And now they're again, now they're, they're complete opposite of it. It's. They notice after you see what reality is, you change your mind. You can change your plans in the middle of a thing. Hey, this is not reality. This is not right. We can change this and correct what we're doing. We shouldn't have done this. My fault. Let's work around this. Let's make a better thing out of this. Let's do this right. That's leadership. Leader, again, leadership is not, all right, COVID's the black death. Well, the CDC comes out that's only 9,000 people have died strictly from COVID, even though, and that one guy, as I mentioned in the new show, if you look at it with 2.5, uh, uh, everyone on average had 2.5 uh, comorbidities with them. And even he goes into stat, the stats, uh, I forget his name, I got two of his books up there. Um, it's what, 55,000 people dead? So it's still not, not even close to 1918, not even close to the Black Plague. And, you know, like I say, you see all these other evidences. They're just looking at cases. Barely anybody is dying from it, which people people die every day. We we can admit that. But to the point that we have to change how we view each other, you got to muzzle yourself up. You can't smile at each other. Priests are looking like they're going into surgery to give communion. We got I've seen pre, I've seen altar boys uh, disinfecting the altar rail when you go by. You know how much sense that makes? There's zero evidence for that. It's funny that, you know, no one cares about dropping a particle of our Lord down on the carpet. But God forbid if uh, someone has a, you know, touch, if their elbow touches the altar rail, or the altar rail and now you got to disinfect that thing, which should be a little altar rail cloth over since it's the people's, the people's altar. You should be leaning on it in the first place, but that's beside the point. This whole social distancing thing when you got to keep people away from each other because you got to look at your brother as a biohazard, not as a fellow human, someone to love and talk to, but as an enemy that could get you sick because now all of a sudden we got to be safe. And you know what? That's the worst word you could say. I shiver every time I hear the word safe. If we turn the TV on, watch something, and you know every commercial, Chick-fil-A, we're going to deliver it in a safe way. Safe! Someone could choke on the chicken. Like eating it, driving down the road. What? What do you mean safe? What is? Are we? Are, keep the windows up. I want you to deliver my food in a hazmat suit. <laughs> if we're come on, if, we're, if this is the reality of thing, why not? This is September. This has started. What was it? March, and we haven't had holy water in the church in how many months? Can't get out of sanitizer. I, last I checked, there's no prayer for sanitizer that remits any venial sin. Uh, uh, I'm told uh, for from you know <laughs> looking up the holy water as a sacramental that 
holy water remits venial sin. But we've gotten rid of that, and now we got holy sanitizer, which is not holy or sanitizes anything. And we've gotten rid of the idea of remitting venial sin. So from all sac from that sacramental, so we've kicked the sacramental out of the church. Can we admit that was wrong? I had to go into a, a church that was taught by Dominicans a couple weeks ago and ask, "Hey, you got any holy water in there?" <laughs> I felt like a crackhead going in there. Hey, you got any of that holy water? <laughs> Yeah, it's around the corner. It opened up a jacket. There's some bottles right there. Are there any priests out there, bishops, that see this reality? I know there's some that are terribly scared. I don't know why. You know, as for a Catholic to be scared, it's I, it's not supposed to happen. And for our leaders to be scared, that's really bad news. It's really not supposed to happen. Are there any bishops out there? that listen to this or do you know of anybody if you're a layman that know that see this as what it is a scam and wanting to do something with it and have no idea what to do i'm trying to contact bishops now say here here's some ideas do it and we will back you up i mentioned i emailed the secretary for Cordelia, uh, archbishop corleone the other day and told madam tell him just to tell the city to go pound sand and open the churches up and if, he, if they arrest them, then they arrest them. We will stand behind him for that and let him be a martyr for the church because we need that to be able to get back in the game. Maybe others will follow suit, but we got to have somebody to lead to take that first step. We ended up having a priest do it. It wasn't in a sermon. It was in a QA. and a And people are crucifying him for over that. As one other priest said, he just said what everybody else is thinking, but no one's had the guts to say it. Why? Why is no don't we have fortitude anymore? Is do we, no one has the guts to say that anymore? If you know if you know it's a lie and you live it, then you're lying, aren't you? Or you're gaslighting everybody by knowing that it's fake and then still going with it. That's not good. Imagine judgment day when you when the great judge sits there and talks about this to you. What are you going to say? Well, I didn't want to look unpopular or I didn't want them to come after me on on TV. Do you think that's going to fly? How many martyrs that, that stood up to the, the state, stirred up to, you know, St. John uh, St. John Fisher told the king, no, nope, not St. Thomas More, same thing, but telling the king they're not going to go with the marriage. Can't we tell that to the governors? We're opening the churches. And in some cases, the diocese are doing it to themselves. To where I'm at, it's not the state. The bishop did it. I, I don't know why I and I've talked to pre I've talked to some priests they one says this one says that I don't know who to you know who's in charge in, in this anymore because you think if there's a leader there's someone in charge the bishop, and everyone's supposed to conform to things we got some wide open some closed others in between one with this many people one with this many people one that has this one has this the communion is all uh, different you don't know what's going on uh, in parishes anymore the crisis of authority that needs to be corrected. There's another shutdown coming. You see it. You see it. You got to be able to see that. You see the reports. Everyone's talking about the case. Case is going up. Case is going up. Ireland, they're already talking about it. Other countries, they're already talking about it. I think England was talking about it. I was watching Peter Hitchens this morning. He's on there every Monday, by the way. It's He's, he's great to check out. All those guys, Gates and them, say September. Next shutdown. Guess what month it is? It's September. I hope I'm dead wrong. I admit it. I'll admit it too. Can I, can if anybody is are there any clerics out there that can admit they're wrong? Please, I'll let you know I'm wrong. If this doesn't go down, I hope I'm wrong. But what if I'm not? Then you thought you know Easter was canceled. Christmas is going to be canceled. You're going to have Zoom Christmas parties. They're going to be promoting that. You know, call into grandma and be Zoom because, you know, the the further we are, the closer we are is the new slogan, you know, because they don't want anybody near anybody. You got to be on Zoom. So up is down. Ignorance is strength. War is peace. And now the further you are, the closer you are. And apparently safety is wearing a hazmat suit and bathing in hand sanitizer until you die. So where do you stop? You're, are you ready for Christmas to be canceled? 
but it's not far fetched. And we hear this obedience. I just got a text today. A friend of mine said that he thinks all the the priests are are won't speak out about this to be obedience to the uh, bishop. Well, that's great. I mean, it's good to be obedient. You know, obedience is a virtue. But if the house is on fire and the bishop tells you to stay in the house, that's not obedience. Or if the bishop tells you to fly United Airlines because he flies United Airlines, that's not obedience. Kind of like if your uh, so if your boss tells you to mow your lawn and you don't do it, that's not disobedient. You're not there to mow. You're, you're not paid to mow his lawn. We are not a cult that does not think as well. The angelic doctor even says, uh, a subject is bound to obey his superior within the sphere of his authority. Now, in a religious life, yeah, you give up your entire self. When people are text telling me or telling everyone, hey, you see what these saints say about obedience? Yes, that is right. They are speaking also of religious orders, where if the religious goes up to them and says, you know, you can't do X, then you can't do X. You're, you've given your all your rights away. Now, if you sit there and, you know, a priest comes in front of the bishop and the bishop drops his pen on the ground and tells him to pick it up, and he repeats that 30 times, that's not exactly obedience. That's basically like uh, being a slave at the at the time now. That's, that's an abuse of power. A bishop can't tell the priest that they can't work out or can't work out. They can only drink this coffee or that coffee. They have to drive four wheel car, four wheel, you know, four or four wheel drive vehicles or doors with two doors, or they can't do motorcycles, you know, etc. Things like that. So for things like uh, the state, for example, uh, the the catechism explained Sprago Catechism, which uh, my bud Ryan Grant republished. It mentions the churches in its own department, absolutely independent of the state. For Christ left the teaching and government of his church to the apostles and their successors, not to any temporal sovereign. Hence, the state has no claim to dictate to Christians what they are to believe and reject, nor to instruct priests what they are to preach, nor how and when they are to give sacraments, say mass, etc. Such interference has always been re resented by the church. Dot, 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 dot. St. Thomas teaches in regards to the second proposition. We maintain that human law has a rational of law, rationale of law, insofar as it is in accordance with right reason, and as such is obviously derived from eternal law. And obviously everyone knows the line of St. Augustine uh, from On Free Will uh, fr on Free Choice of the Will, Book One, Paragraph Five, and unjust law is no law at all. So I'm sure everybody's listening to this is probably on the same wavelength that this the uh, scandemic, like I will not say pandemic, is blown out of proportion. We're at a 99.9% uh, survival rate in the state of South Carolina, south of me. I'm in North Carolina. My home my home state is South Carolina. They came out with a, a new state. The math it's at a 0 0.02 mortality rate. Neil Ferguson's numbers of 2.2 million dead have been totally debunked, laughable, discredited. Even there was a report out the other day I mentioned on the news show that they were coming out with 600,000 supposed to be dead by the end of the year. Uh, who listens to these people? I have, do not know. Obviously, social distancing, face masks, sanitizers, all that is just getting ridiculous. And yet they're still, they're talking, you know, again, to see what Australia is doing. Quarantining, they got quarantine camps for people down there. If this was a plague, where are the bodies? There should be bodies all over the place in the street. And yet, there's a guy that argue, that's arguing with on Twitter right now. He's saying that uh, he knows a couple people that are, uh, uh, that have the, have the COVID. He said, well, are they okay now? Is well, two of them are, I guess, and two of them are still having it, but it's not that good. Okay, I get it. The flu sucks too. I didn't like it when I had the flu. I remember the first time being in Denver, I was down on the bed for a month, uh, not a month, for a week. Not fun. I barely ate. But I figured I'd go, I'd recover from it. I figured eventually it'll go away. There's some evidence from scripture. 
Remember uh, the Hebrew midwives, the five pharaohs, orders to kill, Exodus 1. So they realize the killing of newborn is defying the higher law by God. Therefore, they decide not to participate in the law that will harm their own people and also break God's laws. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, remember, they refused to obey the laws of Nebuchadnezzar on the grounds that the higher moral law was at stake, Daniel 3. Jesus responds to the woman caught in adultery, John 8, 1 through 11. So rather than obey this law to kill her, he calls around people to recognize their shared participation in sin. He teaches us that preservation in life and restorative justice is far greater law rather than one that privatizes the sin and focuses on punishment of death. Jesus feeds and heals on the Sabbath, Mark 2, 23, 28, John 5, 1 through 16. Rather than worrying about the law that says a person cannot work on the Sabbath, Jesus sees that human dignity and life is far more important. Disobeying such a law upholds the importance of dignity and life rather than merely following the religious law. So I'll link this in the show notes section. Jesus in the temple, Matthew 21, 12, 13, John 2, 13, 14. Jesus ta- challenges the laws of the sacrificial system and the selling of items in the temple by turning over the tables and chasing out the animals. He uses direct disobedience as a religious law and physical disruption of the structures to point to an alternative system of mercy, not sacrifice. We must obey God rather than men, Acts 5:29. By obeying our conscience and the belief of a higher power, we follow a law that is deeper than human laws. Such laws do not always reflect the needs of humanity and importance of life. Now, there's plenty of other articles on about, you know, uh, the, the bishops have the authority to stop communion on the tongue and force everybody to do communion in the hand. There's plenty of articles for that. I'm not getting into that. But the evidence for what's going on is clear. Obviously, if you ever look at all the other plagues in the history of the church, you'll see one thing happening. A lot, of, a lot of devotion sprung up afterwards. What's going on this time? The opposite. Because we're getting lied to and, like I said, gaslighted by our own, they're not coming back to, the, they're not coming back to parishes. No one's even thinking about it. Most people aren't even thinking about going to Mass on Sunday. Are they sitting at home reading their Bible? If they even turn the TV on for a live Mass, quote-unquote, they're not exactly, you know buying all the saint books and reading that or Dom Garage or, or praying extra rosaries or definitely I haven't seen that the confession line go in the other day I went in and it was nobody in line I walked right in there is a devotion that we probably need to all jump on which hopefully we'll do a podcast on this soon uh, probably this week is devotion to the holy face if you read the book which TAM publishes and obviously if you type SF15 in the checkout you get 15% off the golden arrow Towards the end, the last three or four chapters, our Lord talks about how this is the weapon against communism. It's the only devotion that names communism by name. And we are getting a hump, lump, some dose of some communism right now. You ever notice? I didn't know this until I was reading Kangor's book on Politically Incorrect Guide to Communism. That one of the common things about it one of the first things everybody does in the communistic nation is buy all the toilet paper there's always a flood of toilet paper being gone i, I never th- i never knew that it's russia venezuela you name it toilet paper is one of the first thing to go <laughs> it just i was wondering when this was going on so why in the world is toilet paper the thing right now so pray for your bishops please and if there's any bishops that are just not wanting to be public about things or wondering what they can do, please, let's let's talk. Let's get a group together and chat about this, whatever. Wanting to help because this is not ending. If you read anything about what they're saying, they're talking about this not ending to the end of 2021, possibly the early 2022. What's going to happen? What will happen by then? You're talking another year and a quarter at the minimal. You think devotion's going up? You're going to lose some churches. Money's not going to come in unless you're asking for money from the government again. And then if you ask for money from the government, what does that mean? Uh, you just can't talk about the government. Then They're going to do whatever they want. And you're not going to be able to say anything. Good luck calling out abortion. We're just going to sit there and do nothing for a year and a quarter, year and a half? What if it gets worse? Are you going to back the vaccine? If a bishop tells everybody to take the vaccine, that's not that's something you don't have to obey. 
especially when it's warp speed in like this. If you have any idea about vaccinations, the speed, the ones that are sped, was it the HPV was sped up in two years and they had massive problems with that. They're looking at what doing this in months and trying to get you to get, you know, take the snake oil. Will the bishop tell anybody that they must take that? I know the Holy Father's out there with the WHO, the WHO, and they're linking, they, the WHO is linking this with uh, Laudato Si and uh, climate change. Do we just sit by and just take it? There's some out there saying this isn't the hill to die on. I'm sorry. In Detroit, they have RoboCop uh, helmets out there, RoboCop cops. They got this helmet they can track or tell who's got the COVID or not. And uh, was it Massachusetts? They got these robot dogs that can do the same thing. Australia, they're locking people up for not wearing a mask. Uh, they're they locked they locked up a pregnant lady right before she went to an ultrasound for just posting about a protest, just posting about it. New Zealand, they got the concentration camps. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say that? Was that a slip? Of the quarantine camps. Ireland. They're, they got the app coming out, the tracing app coming out, and they're just uh, uh, they're about to abolish private property out there. You know, just normal communist ideas. Canada's having a protest. I think Antarctica is the only one not having a protest. The protest. I think they're peaceful down there, but don't think a word. I'm I'm sure they got a penguin all muzzled up down there for some reason. So for them, this for anybody to say this isn't the hill to die on, I question your manliness, really. What was it going to take? Is are you are these one are these people one of those that just you know, whenever it comes for me, then I'll compare about <laughs> too late then, brother. Get in the fight now, but you know when it happens to you, I guess we'll welcome you in. But hey, you know, too late then, pal. We need leaders to step up. We need our bishops to lead us out of this. The church is supposed to be the light of the world, not to participate in the darkening of the world. The church is not supposed to help gaslight the entire planet. We're supposed to lead. We're supposed to call out these lies, to call out the gaslight, speak truth. Speak truth come what may, too, from the, even from the pulpit. If there's priests out there worried about it, do it. We'll back you up. You got to do it. Who's not? Who else? If you don't do it, who's going to do it? Who else is going to do it? Just like the paratroopers we talked about a couple months ago when watching that one movie, their slogan is that other so that others may live. What? Why do they do it? They they jump in the worst areas, getting shot at from all ways, probably going to die so that others may live. We need priests to be doing that so that others may live. Because right now there's a lot of souls that are not going to be living they might be caring about their bodies. They might be, quote unquote, safe. Where's that Braveheart scene? Safe, you know, living and sleeping in your bed. You might you might make it out through the day, maybe another year. You know, that whole time when they're talking about that big battle there. We gave us just one chance. You know, all these guys quote that movie for the Unite the Clans. That's, is that all? There's more to that that movie, even though it's really inaccurate. A lot, but it's got some cool, cool scenes, obviously. And just used one. And no, I'm not telling everybody to be disobedient. You know darn well I'm not saying that. But in matters where a bishop comes out or a priest comes out saying, you must wear a muzzle to mass, how many of these priests that say that do not care or have never ever preached on modesty? So you can wear a muzzle in ma at, during, during mass, but you can wear shorts up to your cheeks, your butt cheeks, and that's okay? Walk in like a slut? But as long as you have a muscle on, a muzzle on, it's fine. Cut, we, we're back. We we got everything upside down and backwards. I actually saw some of this the the other week. People wearing muzzles in. I mean, they were. This wasn't a mandated uh, mandate to do it. But nobody was dressed appropriate for any anything. Definitely not a mass. But there are parishes that I've been. There's one not too far. We were going to go to confession the other day. It said masks are required. Well, what about you know, modesty. Or can can I can you dress up like whatever? You go to like you know, tank top and short and skimmies and flip flops and be okay as long as you got a mask on. That should be called out. Let's show some consistency here. 
I mean, at least give it a, a head fake to it. Like, and I told my wife, at least there's not one priest north of here that's, he's got a sign out saying, you're not coming in unless you're dressed like this. This is not allowed. This is allowed. But he doesn't even mandate mass. He says, you know, he's told people to, you know, at a charity for other people. But so I don't, I haven't mentioned it to him because, hey, this guy every day has the sign out. He actually preaches against immodesty. I can, hey, give him, I'll give him a break on that one. Pretty much every other priest you know of has never taught preached on modesty. But all of a sudden the mask makes it in there. You cover your face, can't see a smile, can't see it, can't see your facial expression, screwing up kids, putting mask on kids. What are you doing in a kid's mental state? You can't even see the emotions or anything. Are you making on there so you know make a three year old put a mask on? That's bright. Especially when you got all the stats show there's a hunt, nobody, it's not affecting any kid. Again, again, we're not a cult. You don't just say things and people are supposed to do it without blind thinking. Here, drink the Kool Aid. No, we're, sp- and priests, clerics, by, please study, look up this stuff. I can't be the only one, I'm, I know I'm not the only one, but I can't be the only one that's looking at this and got to say that how many priests we have? Let's, I don't know what the exact number is. Say 2,000. Are we telling me there's 2,000 priests that haven't seen any of this? Or haven't looked at it and going, hmm, you know, this isn't working right. Obviously, I know a couple. I mean, the ones who talk to me, they're, they're like this. But really, all the other ones are just sitting there studying Thomas Aquinas and Augustine every day? No, I'm pretty sure that not every priest is in there studying all day. Most of them are trained to be CEOs of the parish. So uh, what, are you, what are you getting out of this? If, if somebody is saying, hey... You know, we got to do this and this and this because it's the Black Plague. Have you got you guys got cars? Have you driven and say, you know what? It doesn't look as bad as everybody's saying. Now let me look into this a little bit. Oh, why are they pulling these videos off YouTube? Let me check out what this is about. You know what? I'm I'm just not buying that people are supposed to be dying all over the place when I don't see anybody dying all over the place and everybody's recovering. I mean, people take logic classes. I mean, is, is no one doing it? Did we quit? Did our brains quit thinking on December 31st at 11.59 p.m. right before the new year? And all of a sudden, poosh, we had an EMP in our heads. So when I hear somebody say, you must wear a mask no matter what, that's not a, that's an abuse. Uh, you want to talk about clericalism? <laughs> I'd say that might be there. But it's not disobedient not to wear a mask. Just like it won't be disobedient to not take the vaccine. Just like it's not disobedient to use holy water at mass. Just like it's not disobedient to kneel before God in the Eucharist and receive him as reverently as possible. Because, I don't know, I'm pretty sure God doesn't want to be stepped on when the crumbs come off people's hands. Uh, when they do communion in hand and then somebody comes up behind him and steps on him with their sneakers on or flip-flops. I'm pretty sh- I just got a hunch. I, you know, call me crazy. I don't think that's good. <laughs> How many times we've stepped on our Lord? How many times he's been stepped on or maybe vacuumed up and thrown in a garbage can and thrown in the dumpster? Yeah, yeah maybe. I just, I don't know. Call me nuts. I just think that uh, he's not too happy about that one. And look at long-term effects. I'll put some links down on, uh, from doctors. I don't, like I said, I don't know what people were reading. What the heck do you not find this? I'm an idiot and I can find this stuff. And I'm busier than anything. And I can still find this stuff and read it and look at it. And it still take time to be able to play with the kids, do my work, get the other work done, my little job, and provide for the family. But, I mean, we've got long-term. We're going to have long-term consequences for what people wear in these face masks. I walked around the hospital, like I said, without a mask on. Nobody cared. Walked in Costco. I was whistling Dixie. No one cared. Just drives me nuts. I can't even say hi to people without trying to figure out what they're saying back to me because you can't hear them because it's muffled voices. And then you got these Catholic groups out there, you know, promoting mass muzzles with Catholic symbols on them. You're part of the problem. Just sick that they would do that. Put some holy things on a face muzzle and it's sell it and think they're virtual signaling everybody so we've had one or two priests like father ultimate hey i'll give him a shout out thanks father that's pretty cool of you to give us a shout out uh i think you're the first one other than uh guys i've actually met to do that uh, appreciate you yeah we are living in a clown planet you see 
they got the local school down to uh, the Catholic school. There, my sister te- uh, sister in law teaches there. Says that they're putting the no no recess, but they get put the kids out on the sidewalk, not sidewalk in the parking lot, six feet away on the blacktop. They can't play with each other. They can only talk to each other from the six feet away. They gotta stay in their square. Why don't you just put them in orange jumpsuits and call it a prison? They were not. We can't even let kids play with each other. That's a Catholic school. Come on. You got shields all over on the desk. You got to fumigate the home. She was saying we we clean more than we teach. I'm predicting that this is going to be the end of Catholic. This will be the end of Catholic schools in public schools. Thank God on public schools. Maybe thank God on Catholic schools. You're not teaching the faith too well, anyways. Maybe that is needed. But seriously, what sense does that make? Who sat there in a group and said, you know what? Let's put all the kids out on the blacktop and just make them stand there for a few for 30, 40 minutes and talk to each other. They can't play with anybody. Because we got to teach them that their na- their friends are biohazards and to be scared of each other, and who approved that? Who? How you think that's approved? Or going to the cafeteria, you can't sit next to each other in the cafeteria anymore. There was one school that says that the uh, uh, fork the kids can play with or assign four four each or whatever in a group, and they can only play with those four. Again, that's why don't you just, that's a prison. When is enough enough? Where is the diagonal line in the sand? Where is that? You know, like the uh, Star Wars, not Star Wars, Star Trek, when Captain Picard says, no more. They come after us, we fall back. We come after us, we fall back. No, no more, the line must be strong. Hear it. No more. Where's our no more? We don't have a no more. We just keep going. We just keep taking it. When does this become spiritual suicide? That's not virtuous. All right, well, I'll get off here for you. God love you. I'm not despairing. Just it's twelve o'clock at night now, and just I'm just ready to get going for the next day. Trying to get, trying to convert one out of this fachi spell. If I can get one, maybe we get two, maybe we get three. Converting people to the one true faith and converting people out of the fachi spell. It's a double time. Maybe we can do it both at the same time. Anyways, God love you.